Hello and welcome to the walking talking topic on exchange rates and a lot more with me Mr Barton. Okay question one. Uh, Miriam is planning a holiday to Pakistan. Miriam went to an exchange bureau to get some Pakistan rupees for a holiday. She exchanged 540 quid for 85,000 Pakistani rupees. Complete the statement below. Now this is your classic um, exchange rate style question and you've just got to make sure you get things uh, the right way around. So my way of doing this as I always just write it out, I've got pounds and I've got rupees, I've got 540 quid, I get 85,000 rupees and I want to know what one pound is. So I set it up like a ratio. How have I got from 540 to one? Well, I've divided by 540. So what am I going to do to get my rupees? I'm going to divide by 540 as well. So I'm going to turn to my calculator. Here he goes. 85,000 divided by 540, press equals, get a horrendous looking answer there, press my SD button, and I get 157.407, 157.407. And a little tip, just check it makes sense. You're getting more rupees than you are pounds, so check that you're also getting more rupees than you are pounds. Just make sure you do it the right way around that way. Okay, uh, what's going on here? Miriam knows that when it's 1 p.m. in London, it is 6 p.m. local time in Karachi, Pakistan. Miriam is booked onto a flight leaving London on Tuesday at 13.50 hours. The flight time is 7 hours and 51 minutes. On what day and in what local time should she arrive? Okay, slightly tricky on this one, but as long as you get your head around it, it's not, it's not the worst thing you've ever seen. So, um, 1 p.m., um, in London is 6 p.m. in Karachi. So Karachi is five hours ahead. So that's the first thing to get your head around, five hours ahead. So I'm going to look at what the actual departure time would be in Karachi. Because if we work that out, then we only have to add on our seven hours and 51 minutes and we've got it. So if the departure time is 13.50 hours or 1.50 p.m., and it's five hours ahead, then I think it's fair to say that that's 18 50, and I'm just going to make a note that that's Karaki time with a little K there. Five hours after 1.50 is 6.50 or 18.50. So then it takes seven hours and 51 mins. Okay, so let's add our seven hours onto 18. Now the beauty of doing it as a 24-hour clock is you can just add them on. So seven hours onto 18 I think makes 25. So a complete day would be 24. So that must be 1 in the morning. And then we've got to add 51 minutes onto 50. So that's going to give us 101 minutes. But remember, 60 minutes are in an hour. So that's like 1 hour and an extra 41 minutes added on. So it's not just 1 in the morning. Now we've got our extra hour to add on. So that's going to be 2 in the morning. And then we've got our 41 minutes left over. So I think that she is arriving at 02, 41 minutes. And it's the following day, so it must be a Wednesday. So Wednesday at 02, 41. And as I say, the way my preferred way of doing that is to immediately change to the departure time in the time zone that you're landing in. And then you can simply add on the time from there. But the fun doesn't stop there. So now we got part two. Miriam's flight actually arrived seven hours forty. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there he goes. Miriam's flight actually arrived seven hours forty-five after departure. The airplane flying speed was four hundred and thirty-four knots. What the flipping X are not? Well, given that a knot is one point eight five kilometers per hour, calculate the distance. Okay, and we've got to give our answer in kilometers. Right, what do we know about distance, speed, and time? Well, we know that speed is equal to distance divided by time. And if we do a little bit of rearrangement there, multiplying both sides by time, I think we'll find that speed multiplied by time is going to give us our distance. Now, the only key thing here is we've got to make sure all our units are right. We want our distance to be in kilometers. So our speed is going to have to be in kilometers per hour. Let's make a little note of that, kilometers per hour, and our time is going to have to be in hours. Okay, so let's get our speed sorted first. So our speed is 434 knots 
but each knot is 1.85 kilometers per hour. So I think if we times that by 1.85, we're going to get our speed in kilometers per hour. Let's have a look at that. 434 knots times by 1.85. That's going to give us a speed of, we're going to have to press our SD button again, 802.9 kilometers per hour. Okay, not too bad so far. So that's our speed in kilometers per hour. Now we're going to need our time, and that's got to be in hours. Now, whatever you do here, don't write down that that is 7.45 hours. 7 hours 45 minutes is not 7.45. We've got to change this minute into a decimal of an hour. So we know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. So 45 over 60. Now we can simplify that down or we can bang it onto the calculator, but I'm pretty sure that's going to come down to three quarters. And that's no surprise, 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour, otherwise known as 0 0.75. So it is 7.75 hours. And now we're laughing because we've got our time in hours, we've got our speed in kilometers per hour, so that's going to give us our distance in kilometers. So our distance is equal to our speed, 802.9 times by our time 7.75 and let's have a look here well I've already got 802.9 on my calculator that's good news times by 7.75 press me equals do me a little SD and I get 6,222.475 kilometers. And it's <coughs> always worth just having a look at your answer and just thinking, does that actually make sense? Well, London to Pakistan is going to be a fair old trek. So if I got something like 100 or 200 or something like that, I'd be slightly worried. That's looking fairly decent to me, I think.